being in the number one most time, getting ready to call our Sunday school to order. I'm going to start with prayer, followed by the reading of our lesson by our very own First Lady, Lady Brown. And then we'll come back and expound on the lesson. Eternal God, once again, we thank you for your Holy Ghost. We thank you for the power that you've invested in us. God, we ask this morning that you would have your way in the service. Bind and rebuke the devil on every hand in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray that you would let your word fall on good ground, that it may take root and grow thereby in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for an opportunity just to come in fellowship before you. We thank you for the many blessings, God. We ask that you would have your way on today in the name of Jesus. These and all of the blessings we ask and pray. Amen. You're now in the hands of our very own First Lady. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, listen, audience. Good morning, and before I get off into reading the introduction, I want to say Happy Father's Day. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, uncles, grandfathers, uh, godfathers. Happy Father's Day to you, and thank you for stepping up, doing your role, what needs to be done to help raise the children. Thank you all. Lesson three into our summer quarter, June 19, 2022. And the subject on this morning, celebrate Jubilee. Celebrate Father's Day. Celebrate Jubilee. Our lesson scripture on this morning will be found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25. And I will advise you to read the whole chapter, the whole chapter, but uh, our lesson is going to start at verse 8. But Leviticus, the 25th chapter, Bible truth on this morning, Jubilee was an opportunity to begin anew. I remember verse, which reads as follows, And you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. That is very interesting, but the memory verse will focus on the 10th verse in Levitica, Leviticus chapter 25. Our lesson aim on this morning, by the end of the lesson, we will explain why Jubilee was an opportunity to begin anew, reflect on a time when we needed to begin again, and summarize the principles of Jubilee. Life need for today's lesson. Life need for today's lesson. One, to be reminded of how God gave us many second chances to do things right. Two, to praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, God for giving us times of jubilee. Three, that you will, that each of you will, be thankful for a merciful God giving times of jubilee. In our introduction on this morning, which reads as follows, there is a vintage song of the church entitled, He Broke the Chains. Now, I tried to look that up and find that song so I can hear it, but I heard a different version. Hopefully, the next song y'all put in, publishers, you always say, who wrote that particular song? But anyway, this very heart-stirring song extols what God has done for humanity when he gave his life on that cruel cross at Calvary. One verse says, my life was lost in sin and shame, the way I could not see, but Jesus came, oh, bless his name and set my spirit free. The chorus proclaims, I can't forget the day he spoke to my troubled soul. Words of peace that made my burdens roll. 
He broke the chains that bound and set all my joy bells ringing. Praise to his matchless name. The song, He Broke the Chains, should remind us that we were in captivity as well. We needed a Savior to set us free. And we needed to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we could be saved. It should also remind us that sometimes, even after we are saved, we can find ourselves in captivity to bills, credit cards, our jobs, the families, busy schedule, whatever the uh, burden is. Still, we need that same God to help set us free. Elder Sacker. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, we thank God for the reading of the lesson known this morning by our very own First Lady. Our topic today says celebrate Jubilee. Celebrate Jubilee. Now, before we get started, I just want to make sure we understand that this lesson was written directly to the Jews. Now, I'm going to definitely try to take out of it uh, how it benefits us as a people. However, it was written directly to the Jews. Are y'all with me? Amen. Praise the Lord. We know that the Jews were God's chosen people, and it was written to them. Now, how, does, uh, how, does, how do we as a people fit in? Uh, when it comes to the Jews, the Bible say, amen, we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. You'll find that, I believe, in the book of Romans. We were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and but God engrafted us in. Amen. Praise the Lord. He allowed us to come in and to have relationship with him because he would be an unjust God if he just made it himself available to the Jews. Am I right? Amen. But he's such a good God. He waited for us. If you remember, the Bible say, Jesus came to his own, which were the Jews, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And we thank God for him. And the Bible say, now, brethren, uh, it says, behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Am I right? And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we shall, when we shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall see him as he is. Isn't that what the scriptures say? Amen. Praise the Lord. But the day we celebrate, uh, the topic says, celebrate Jubilee. Celebrate, amen, Jubilee. And we'll find out in the lesson as we go further, what does it actually mean to celebrate Jubilee. Now, this passage of scripture start off in Ro um, Romans, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, and beginning at verse 8. But there were some things that had ha taken place prior to us even getting to verse 8. So if you will allow me just a minute to try and go through the short history of just chapter 25. Amen. And this is always why you always need to read prior to because it gives you some understanding of what took place prior to us getting to the lesson. Is that all right? And this is a time period in Israel Amen. Praise the Lord. Before they had entered into, amen, the promised land, they hadn't just, they hadn't quite entered in. But these were instructions that was given to Moses to give to the Israel when they make it to the land of Israel, when, I'm, when they make it to the land of promise. Am I right? Amen. The Bible says the land must observe the Sabbath. Every seven years, the land had to rest. Amen. Every seven years, I want you to think about this. They will grow their crops. They will grow their grapes and whatever. But every seven years, the land was supposed to rest. Anything that we do, uh, if you don't give it a rest, at some point, it's going to break down. Am I right? I'm, I'm using it as an example. You, give your, you run your car in the ground. Uh, you could put a, after about 500,000 miles, it's dead. 300,000 miles on a vehicle is dead. But anything, basically, everything needs a rest uh, because at some point it's going to break down. But God made sure he let the Israelites know every seventh year was a, land of, was a time of rest for the land. Not the people. We'll get to them in a minute. But the land needed the rest. Hmm? Praise the Lord. The land needed the rest. For six years were they able to plant prune, and harvest their crops. 
But as I said, but in the Sabbath year, there was to be no, nothing going on. It was supposed to be completely rest. There was, they was not supposed to do anything with their crops. They was not supposed to plant. They wasn't supposed to water. They wasn't supposed to uh, harvest anything. No prune, no trees or anything. They were not to do anything to the land in that seventh year. Why? Because it was the year uh, of rest. Are y'all with me? It was a time of rest. We know, praise the Lord, farmers now, they plant every day. They're they, they trying to get a harvest every year. Uh, every, I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with farming, but they try to get a harvest every so often. Are y'all with me? But in this passage, God made sure he let them know that they was not supposed to, uh, praise the Lord, go and do any harvesting in the year that it was a Sabbath year. Are y'all with me? And we find out, listen, you know why Israel went into Babylon captivity? Because they didn't let the land rest. They didn't let the land rest. And, and in one passage of scripture, the Bible say, uh, because they didn't, the Bible say the land will spew you out. The land get rid of you. Isn't that something? You, we, we can be caught, we can do something so long and then God say, stop this here. And then a, the land had to spew them out. So, so, so we got to make sure we do that. Um, praise the Lord. He says, don't store away anything. Don't you store away anything because, praise the Lord, we're going to see further in the lesson. Well, wait, wait, God. I mean, you mean you tell me this is how we eat. We eat by what we grow. And then we, because the Bible says, whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. Right? You mean to tell me I'm sowing. But now I can't eat of the fruit in the seven years. So then how am I to survive? Oh, y'all with me? Because we see God saying, don't you prune nothing. Don't plant nothing. Don't you do anything. So how were they supposed to survive when God told them not? Because when you prune, pruning and when you harvesting, you cutting off the branch. You cutting off food. Are y'all with me? So he say, don't you do any of that in the seventh year. Well, how am I supposed to survive, to survive if you tell me I can't eat anything? Praise the Lord. So don't store away anything that grows. Don't plant, harvest, nothing. It is to rest. You can't eat of it, but you can store it. You can't, you, and you can't store it. So notice what God did. He said you can't eat of it. You couldn't store it. Am I right? Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that. So when we get to verse uh, 8 in the Bible, let me get back to my scripture. When we get to verse 8, praise the Lord. When we get to verse 8, it says, Thou shalt, not, thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of a year unto thee, seven times seven years. That is what he said. You shall number the Sabbath seven times. Am I right? What is he saying? Every seven years, praise the Lord, you're supposed to let the land rest. What does it mean to have the Sabbath? What, what, what is the Sabbath? The Sabbath, praise the Lord, represented a day of rest. Am I right? This, the, when, when you think about Sabbath now, praise the Lord, when, if you was to deal with any Jews right now, the Jews won't deal with you on that Sabbath day. I don't care what you got going on. You're not getting any, you, they're not going to deal with you on a Sabbath day. Praise the Lord. Because it is it's something that they acknowledge, amen, that God had told them to do. And so they're not going to deal with you on their Sabbath day. So, so he says in verse 8, he says, And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of the years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seventh Sabbath of the seven years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. What is he saying? Praise the Lord. Now he's getting ready to let us know that seven years, every seven years, praise the Lord, we don't, we let the land rest. And seven times seven is 49, which means that 50th year, which we will call the year of Jubilee. In the year of Jubilee, there was not, that was, they, I heard one person say it was the Sabbath of Sabbaths. It was not, you was not supposed to do anything to the land. That land was supposed to rest. It was not supposed to be, you're not supposed to do anything, praise the Lord, in the land on that day. Verse 9 says, Thou shalt 
Uh, then shall thou cause the trumpet of jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. Watch, in the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all the land. Now, what did the trumpet do? The trumpet was a sound. Hmm? And it sounded, when you heard the sound of a trumpet, it represented jubilee. Right? What did jubilee mean? Hmm? I'm going to give you, an ex uh, uh, give you the, a definition. In the Jewish history, praise the Lord, jubilee meant to be emancipated. Amen. Mean to be set free or, or to, to uh, whatever obligations you had, you was uh, free of those obligations in the year of Jubilee. That would to take place every 50 years. Am I right? Now I'm about to show you something. Remember, I believe our pastor preached a few weeks ago about uh, um, how they were all sitting on one accord and in one place. And it was as if fire, clothes of fire, tongues of fire had fallen on them, right? That was in the book of Acts, right? And that, I can't remember the scriptures slipped my mind, but he was talking about that, that actually was a year of Jubilee. Y'all know that? When you read in the book of Acts, let me just get this scripture real quick because I'm, I want to make sure you watch this here. The book of Acts, I believe, chapter 2. Watch me. Acts chapter 2, and, and verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. This was, the <laughs> Pentecost mean what? Pentecost mean 50. It was the 50th year. In the day of Pentecost, they were all with one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush, sound of a rushing mighty wind, and it set on each of them. Now, I found that to be significant because Pentecost was every 50 years, was 50 years, uh, 49 years. And so the celebrating of the Sabbath was every 40, the, 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 the Jubilee was every 49 years, which was, and Jubilee means to me, be emancipated. I don't know about you, but listen, I, I want to be set free. I believe if the world operated like the Bible operated back in those days, praise the Lord, we would be in a much better place. Because we're going to talk about how in the 50th year, if you had land that you owed or that you owned and you sold that land in the, in the, in the year of Jubilee, that land was supposed to go back to your family. We don't work like that nowadays. What's mine is mine and you ain't getting it back. I'm keeping this, this mine. Hmm? You, you lost your land. Sorry on you. You, huh? you lost your house in a card game, sorry on you. Am I right? But that's not how God wanted it to be. So verse 9 says, Then shall thou cause the trumpet uh, of jubilee to sound, and on the tenth day and the seventh month, and the day of atonement, shall you make the trumpet sound throughout the land, throughout all the land. Now what was the day of atonement? Now we know what Jubilee was. It was, praise the Lord, the release. Uh, it was, praise the Lord, uh, the celebration of being free from whatever debt, whatever obligation you had. That was the year of Jubilee. Now the day of atonement, praise the Lord, was when the children of Israel would go and acknowledge, praise the Lord, that they have sinned or whatever they've done, praise the Lord, and try to get that thing right with God. That was the day of atonement. Are y'all with me? So we know what the year of Jubilee was, which was every 49 years, which were well, every 50 years, was the year of Jubilee. Because in the, in the 50th year, nothing was supposed to happen, right? That's Jubilee. The day of atonement was when you would make atonement for the sins you've committed. If you remember, the priest would go into uh, the, the, the priest's office and they would make atonement for the people, watch, with the, with the, with the, with the ram's uh, blood, or with the lamb's blood, and praise the Lord. And so he would go in and make atonement for the people because the people would have sin. So this, he's talking about, the day of atonement is talking about how the people would make, uh, we need a day of atonement. We need a day of atonement just to say, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. Amen. I was wrong for what I've done. Some of us need a day of atonement every day. <laughs> but I'm so glad we don't have to worry about the ram no more or the, or, the, or the bullock. We don't have to offer anything because we have a lamb, a perfect lamb that has already made the sacrifice. 
Praise the Lord. So, so that we know the Day of Atonement was when they would go and ask for forgiveness. Am I right? Praise the Lord. So, here we go. Here we go. Verse 9, it says, uh, Then shall thou cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the Day of Atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all the land. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year. What does it mean to hollow? Means, praise the Lord, to sanctify y'all. How many y'all? How many y'all sanctified? How many of you that's even viewing via social media are sanctified? You was to sanct sanctify the fiftieth year. Mean you was to set it aside, or to set it apart, or make it holy. Uh, 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 it was the holiest time of the year. Praise the Lord, and that's what they were supposed to do. God had given basic instructions. To the Israelites. Now, this wasn't given to us. But I tell you what, if you follow it, <laughs> you'd be just as good as the Israelites. <laughs> Am I right? Now, the funny thing is the Israelites nowadays wouldn't follow this here. They wouldn't follow these, these standards because, praise the Lord, I'm not sure. But I know what, if we follow them, you see, we'll get blessed. How many of you believe this here? The devil know this here of a certainty. The devil knows that if he can get you to do contrary to the word of God, that he can get you out the will of God. Why? Because the devil knows the word of God works. So if, if, if we were to hollow, and God knows we need to hollow our, the, the time we're living in, we're living in some dangerous times. They were supposed to hollow the 50th year, set it aside. Amen. Praise the Lord. Make sure you sanctify this day for the Lord. Yeah, and let me say this here. Uh, I, I'm just using as an example. I know we, we come to church on Sunday. We try to seek God. But sometimes people do some of everything on a day that they should give it to the Lord. Now, you got all week long to do everything you want to do. Now, I'm not saying it's a law. But I'm just using as an example. You got all week long to do everything you want to do. You got one day. You can't give God one day. One day. Not two. He said one day. But they were supposed to sanctify that year. They were supposed to set it aside. It was supposed to be holy unto the Lord. Am I right? Praise the Lord. Uh, they were supposed to proclaim throughout the land, I've been set free. In that 50th year, I've been delivered. I've been set free. Amen. Whatever obligations I owe to this one, I owe to that one. I was set free in the year of Jubilee. Now, let me tell you, I know this talking about the Israelites, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care what you're going through. You can be, have a year of jubilee right now. You can get set free right now. All you have to do is turn to the Lord. Am I right? If you, you that's viewing via social media, you can get set free right now. You can have a year of jubilee right now. Y'all understand me? And I want to make sure I'm intellectual with what I'm saying, that I understand that this is speaking directly to the Jews. But I'm also aware that Jesus said, if any man will come after me, uh, if any man be willing and obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. So, so let's move on. Let's move on. Verse 10 says, and ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty. What does liberty mean? Liberty means I am free. Uh, uh, the, uh, freedom is liberty. I have the liberty. We ever see the statue? Of that means freedom. Now, let me help you. I, I found it to be very uh, intriguing that this lesson will be written on today. If I'm not mistaken, this is Juneteenth month. I'm Juneteenth, right? We wasn't really familiar with Juneteenth in Louisiana, but when I moved here, I found out what it actually meant. It was the freeing of slaves who didn't even know that they were free. I believe it was Abraham Lincoln who set that law in motion in 1863, January 1st, 1863, and let the slaves know, y'all free. But the slaves in the South, didn't, they didn't get the memo. So they didn't know they were free. But can you imagine once they found out that they were free? That's how the Israelites were. Listen, if you had an obligation, if you owe somebody this or that, uh, you had to pay this or that, in that 50th year, you was, this, you was set free from whatever obligations you had. It was proclaimed, praise it was the Emancipation Proclamation. That's what it was. Am I right? 
I know a little about history, not a whole lot, but I know some of it. Praise the Lord. It was the Emancipation Proclamation. It, they were emancipated, meaning they were set free. Amen. Praise the Lord. And because Israel didn't do what God say do, praise the Lord, they got themselves in a world of trouble, end up in Babylon. God told them, let the land rest. They go over the years, forget that the land rest. I'm going over what God say do. I'm going to do what I want to do. You got folk like that right now. God telling you to do this, you know, I'm going to do me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what God say. And wonder why they're not blessed. And then they go, then, they, then, then when Solomon builds the temple, he say, Lord, if these people <laughs> who have turned away from you, if they get in bondage and if they turn towards Jerusalem and repent, would you forgive them? God say, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and turn from, don't just turn towards Jerusalem, turn from your wicked ways, then will I heal the land. But I ain't healing no land that y'all done messed up because y'all don't want to listen to what I have to say anyway. I told you I'd heal the land. Matter of fact, you didn't even have to mess the land up if you were to listen to him. Now you want the land healed. Praise he said, I'm not going to heal the land until the people turn from their wicked ways. Stop planting them grapes when I ask you not to. Stop planting them cucumbers in the year that's a Sabbath. Come on here. You got folk like that every day. I, I, I'm going to do me. I'm a, I know what the law say, but I'm going to do me. I'm going to plant this right now. And then, that, <laughs> then, it, and then God said, okay, I'm going to spew you out the land. The land not going to yield nothing for you. Are y'all with me? Come on, let's move on. Praise the Lord. Liberty throughout the land unto the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man, watch this here, unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. What does that mean? Whatever possessions I lost to you, amen, praise the Lord, in that 50th year or in that year of jubilee, which was the year of freedom, or to be set free, I'm supposed to go back and be able to reclaim my land. Why? Because God gave them the land. God gave the people the land, so it's really God's land. Now you go take uh, ownership of God's land. And so God said, no, that don't work like that. If a brother or sister have lost their land, uh, praise the Lord, to another one, praise the Lord, somebody in that family in the year of Jubilee was able to go back and reclaim it because it was God's all the while. Imagine, just imagine, how much better our society would be today if that happened. Oh, bless his name. You're talking about economy working. Just imagine if we followed that concept. Hmm? Just imagine if we did. But, you know, the Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, if I can get your land, I know I got you all the time. I can treat you going to work for me forever. See, that's how, not, and we're going to see how God said, no, we're not doing that. Watch me. Praise the Lord. So verse, verse 11 says, a jubilee shall the fifth, that 50th year be unto you, and ye shall not sow. Notice what he say. Don't you go out and plant no figs. Don't you go out there. Get out that plow. Get off the plow. Get that ass out that field. Get out of there. Because you're not supposed to go out and plant anything. Come on. Don't not, uh, you shall not sow, neither reap. Don't you reap. You don't plant nothing, and don't you reap no crop. Notice how he said, you don't do that because it's, it's, it is the year of what? Jubilee. The land is supposed to rest. How many of y'all give yourself a rest? Sometimes God be trying to get you a rest. You, know, you keep going. Yeah. <laughs> some, some of y'all, God be trying to give a rest. Y'all, I got to go get it. Man, if you don't lay down. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a funny story. Uh, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get back on my lesson. 
One of those mornings I woke up, it was so early, I don't even know what time it was. My wife said, I looked over there, where he at? She said, man, this man just don't stop. Why you got to be up this early? I don't know. I just got to get up, you know? But sometimes God giving you a chance to get rest or trying to let you rest on whatever, but you won't stop. But you're supposed to give yourself, God, when God say rest, it's time to rest. Let the thing alone. Even the preacher, the pastor know when it's enough. Or the pastor should know when it's enough. What I found out, he can't preach everything. You can't. If you study in a lesson, you need to study the lesson in a certain amount of time. Let it be. Because you're going to keep on adding. You can't preach it all. You got to know when enough is enough. But God say, it shall, you shall have rest. A year of jubilee, right? Uh, you shall neither sow, nor you shall grow, uh, reap that which is grown it's of itself. Nor gather the grapes into the vine und uh, undressed. You shall not get no grapes. You ain't don't need to be out there crushing or pulling no grapes and be crushing nothing because it is a year of rest. I want us to remember this. God is telling the Israelites, this is a year of rest. Now, you know what I found out? This is such a simple lesson because you know you can get blessed just by doing what God asks you to do. It don't take much. All you have to do is just do what God asks you to do. It don't take much. It's easy to get blessed from God if you do what he asks you to do. The problem comes in when folk won't do their own thing. When they won't do their own thing, that's when they make it hard on themselves. The Bible say, uh, 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 I can't, the scripture slipped my mind, but it's, it's speaking about how it's tough for them that believe not. When you don't believe, the, 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 the way of the wicked is hard. That's what the scripture say. It's hard for you. When you don't, when you're wicked, it's hard for you. The unjust, to say the ego, the unjust shall be filled with what? Their own devices. It's easy to just do what God asks you to do. That's what he told them. So he said, you shall not gather any grapes undressed. Verse 12 says, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you, and you shall neither eat the increase thereof out of the field. Now, notice what he said. Let me read it again. Verse 12, for it shall be the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the, in the increase thereof out of the field. Now, one passage of scripture say, don't eat anything. And then the other passage of scripture say, you can eat of the field. Wait a minute. This sounds like, and most people, most conspiracy theorists would say, God can uh, contradicting himself. It's an oxymoron. No, it ain't. Because when you read the whole chapter, you'll see what God told the Israelites. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. So wa watch this here. Watch this here. And, and let me say this here also. When people know to do right and they choose not to, they're in trouble with God. Because when, when you know you're supposed to give a brother or sister back what belongs to them and you decide not to, you're in trouble with God. The Bible say uh, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodly men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now they know they should have been let them folk know that they were free. They ain't let them know they were free because they wanted to keep getting that cheap labor. They should have been let them know they were free. Am I right? And some stuff, God, you know God telling you to do this or do that. You know what's right, but you won't do it. God said, I'm going to get you. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. Right? Praise the Lord. So watch this here. Verse 25. And, and before I go to verse 25, the reason why I ask the question, I say, now, how can God say in one passage of Scripture, I can eat of the tree? And then he says in another passage of Scripture, not to eat of the tree. Are y'all with me? Watch this here. Verse, uh, verse 9, 17, chapter 25, and I want you to read this here. Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 17, now verse 18. Watch what it says. Verse 18, 25 and 18. Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes, is what the law say. What is he saying? Listen to me. 
He's not saying nothing hard. All he's saying is, just follow what I'm telling you to do. Have you ever had to, to guide somebody through something? And, and you're trying to guide them through the thing, and well, I could, I could do it this way. No, 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 no. Listen, first of all, you don't know the way. Now, let me show you how to get where you're trying to go. And you continue to try to show them, and they continue to tell you, no, let me go this way. I know folk like that. That's me. That's me. My wife can tell me this way. I ain't going that way. I'm going this way. I'm going the way out. But they got some other folk. I'm speaking about God. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But they got some folk God be saying, no, go this way. No, I don't think that's the right way. I'm going to go my way. If you just follow the statutes and follow the key map, you'll get where God wants you to go. So look what he's saying in verse 18. Wherefore, you shall do my statutes and keep my judgment and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land safely. If you do what God asks you to do, you'll dwell in the land safely. Now remember I told you, he said in one passage, one scripture he said not to eat, but then he said in another passage of scripture, you can eat. Watch, 19, uh, Leviticus chapter 25 and 19, it says, and the land shall yield her fruit, mm -hmm, and keep, uh, the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat to the, full, to the field, and dwell therein safely. Verse 20. And if ye shall say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Why is he saying this here? Because you could not eat in the seventh You couldn't go pull nothing off the vine in the seventh year. Remember, you couldn't go and do any pruning, no harvesting. He said, if ye shall, what shall we eat in the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor shall gather or increase. Verse 21 say, then will I command my blessing. All you have to do is follow the instructions and God will command his blessing. That's so easy. Well, God, wait a minute. You told me not to eat, but then you tell me to eat. Well, what should I do? He say, follow my statutes. And I'm going to command my blessing. Now, I'm not going to send it. I'm going to command a blessing. Blessings listen to God's command. Isn't that a blessing? If a blessing can listen to God's command, what about you and me? And we're God's greatest creation, right? Everything that God created listens but us. We're his most intelligent being. How do I know that? How do you know that? Because the Bible says you were created in the image of God. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Am I right? So I was created in the image of God. So I'm his most intelligent creature. And guess what some of us do? I know what God's telling me to do, but I ain't going to do it. The oceans was created by God. But guess what the ocean ain't going to do? It ain't going to cross its banks. Come on. The weather was created. Time was created by God. But guess what? It, 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 God ain't limited to any of that. Everything followed God's plan but us. If you listen to the statutes, God say, I'm going to command the blessing. Don't you worry about eating. I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to plant. You don't have to water. You don't have to prune. Amen. Praise the Lord. God say, I'm going to take care of you. You reading it yourself. 25, uh, Leviticus 25 and 1 25 and 21 says, then will I command my blessing, but this must take place after you do what God say do. Then will I command my blessing upon you the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for thee three years. Oh, bless his name. So now, now we know that. Uh, how, how am I going to eat? Uh, because you told me not to prune anything. God say, I'm going to bless that six years so much that you'll have enough. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can read the whole chapter. You'll have enough to hold you for two years. That means you don't have to go pick nothing. Because God say, I'm going to command my blessing in that six year. See, the first year, I'm going to give you enough for the second year. The second year, I'm going to give you enough for the third year. The third year, I'm going to give you enough for the fourth year. The fourth year, I'm going to give you enough for the fifth year. The fifth year, I'm going to give you enough for the sixth year. The sixth year, I'm going to give you enough until the eighth year. Come on, say yes, Lord. Isn't he a blessing? He said, no, no, I'm going to bless you so much in the sixth year. You'll have so much, you won't have to go out and do nothing. 
You have enough to sustain you until an eighth year. Isn't God a blessing? God said, I'm going to command my blessing. No, I'm, but you got to listen. Can't be a hard head, knucklehead. Like a lot of us are. I include myself in that notice. I didn't say like a lot of y'all. I include myself. A lot of us are knucklehead, hard head. My mom used to say, boy, listen to me. A hard head make a saw behind. I'll never forget that. I'm like, ain't nothing. <laughs> you know, I ain't nothing. Until <laughs> I got out there, I say, boy, she sure was right. <laughs> and she sure was right. A hard head make a soft behind. A hind part, yeah. Praise the Lord. But so he's God say, I'm going to command my blessings if you learn how to listen. So, so now we know that God didn't leave his people to the point where they couldn't survive. God said, I'll take care of you if you learn how to follow his statutes. People get in trouble when they decide to do what they want to do. That's what happened to Israel. Israel got and went into bondage to the Babylons because they refused to let the land rest. Then they get Solomon after he built a temple, say, Lord, if they pray to this temple, Jesus, uh, God said, if they turn from their wicked ways, then I'll heal the land. I ain't healing no land. I ain't Listen, what the, what the perma worm ate up, didn't eat, the canker worm ate. What the canker worm didn't eat, the grasshopper ate. What the grasshopper didn't eat, the locust ate. And God said, I ain't leaving nothing on the ground for you. Until you learn to turn from your wicked ways and repent, then I'll heal the land. Come on, say yes, Lord. This is a year of jubilee. I don't know about you. He was saying this is the year of jubilee. You got to celebrate that. Verse 25, back in our lesson, 25 and 25, it says, watch what it says. It says, if thy brethren be waxing poor or have grown poor or have gotten poor, praise the Lord, and, and had sold away some of his possession, and if any have of his kin come to redeem it, it shall, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. In other words, he should get it back in the year of Jubilee. He should be able to redeem back what his brother sold. How many know that would be a blessing? Let me, let me say this here and I'm going to move on. I've been in situations where I've known people that stole from me, went sold it to dope dealers. I'm going to just tell it like it go. Sold it to dope dealers and I saw them with it, my stuff on. And I, I remember telling my buddy, when I was back in New Orleans, I said, man, I should go hit him in his face right now and take it. He said, Stack, he said, I believe you can whip him. He said, but he's going to kill you, baby. As Jesse said, he said, Stack, baby, he's going to kill you. He said, he can't let you win, not in front of his boys. He, I said, I, I was mad. But the one I should have been mad at was the one who took my stuff. But now, if everybody operated the right way, he would have said, I can't do that. I'm going to get this man his stuff back. But we don't operate like that. You know why? We don't love each other the right way. We don't love each other the right way. But look what he says. He says, if thy brother be waxing poor and has sold away any of the, his possession, and if, thou, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. He shall be able to purchase it back, what his brother hath sold. So, now watch verse 35. It says, and if thy brother be waxing poor and fallen into decay, meaning he's poor, he has nothing with thee. Thou shalt re re relieve him, yea, though he be a, strong, a stranger or a sojourner, sojourner, which is a foreigner, uh, that he may live with thee. Take thou no usury of him, meaning don't you increase or don't you take no interest, uh, praise the Lord, after your brother have been sold. You, you, don't, you don't add to the price. How many of you know, who is somebody? Ah, yes. I heard the first lady say that last week. How do people change the date on your, I think that was you, who said how they change the date on your credit card so they can charge you <laughs> interest. I say, boy, that ain't nothing but the devil. Isn't that, that's, but that's the day and time we're living in. That's the day and time we're living in. Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear, thou, fear thy God that thy brother may live with thee. Watch this here. 
Watch what verse 29, uh, 39 says. And if thy brother that dwelleth with thee be waxen poor, and he be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. If I, what he was saying is if he's poor, you can't make him serve as a bond servant. What's the difference between a bond servant and a higher servant? A bond servant eat, live, wash, do everything in the house as a servant. You can't, he don't get paid. He work and he eat, live, and sleep. That's a bond servant. But God said you don't treat him like a bond servant when he's gotten poor. You don't do that. He says you treat him as a hired servant. In other words, you got to pay the man. I know some, I see some people on, I work for food. They were trying to work for beer. That's what they're really trying to work for. They ain't trying to work for no food. Lose here. But, 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 but God made sure he said, you don't let the people, you pay the people for work. If a man or brother say they'll work for food, brother, listen, I, I'm not going to pay you with food. I'm going to pay you an amount. I'm going to pay you what the job supposed to pay. Come on. Think about, listen, you, you working to eat? God said he didn't want that to happen that way. But we do that to people today. Say, bro, come, come do this here. I, I'll buy you a meal. That's so out of the will of God. And let me tell you, Christians, don't y'all ever do that. And let me help you also. Don't y'all be out here trying to give these panhandlers your money. And you're a Christian. You help as God see fit. Because the same money you give them will be the same money they go taking. I'm just won't, I just won't get high. Lucia, are y'all with me? I know that's a little off topic, but I just thought I'd throw that in. Be careful who you give your money to. It may not be what the Lord wants you to do. Some of us get in the way of God chastising people and get chastised ourselves. Come on. So he says, verse 40 says, but you should treat him as a higher servant, uh, 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 and as a sojourner or stranger, uh, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee until the year of Jubilee. Meaning that when he was to get poor and he need a job, you don't say, listen, you can come live with me. You can come eat my food. You can come wash. But that's all. I'm, I'm not paying you for what you're going to do. You could, you could gather the sheep or whatever, be a sheep herd or whatever you're going to do, whatever you need him to do. Praise the Lord. Paint whatever you need him to do. Cut your grass, whatever. You were supposed to pay that man is what God said. You don't treat nobody like that. Why? Because you was a sojourner in a strange land. You was once a foreigner. And how would you like if people did you that? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. When we treat people crazy and wrong and bad, we need to ask, how would I want people to treat me if I was in the same situation? The truth is, we don't love people the right way. We don't do things the right way by some people. And, and only certain people get the best quality of service from you. And that's not right. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. So, verse 47 says, And if a sojourner or stranger, which means a foreigner, wax rich with thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself to the stranger of the sojourner by the other, other foreigner, or to the stocks of the stranger's family. Watch. After that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may, may redeem him. In other words, if, 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 I were to, if my brother was to get rich and I fall on hard times, praise the Lord, and, 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 and I was to sell myself to this brother, praise the Lord, after the year of Jubilee, he was supposed to let me free. You don't just hold on to me. That's not right. That's not God. Am I right? Verse 55, and we're done. Praise the Lord. It says, for unto me, the children of Israel are servants. You see? Now, now watch. You got to be careful because we have a God that we are servants to. And think about how you would feel if he treated you the way you treat some. Oh, bless his name. I always try to be right with everybody. I really do. 
especially if people working for me or doing anything for me, I try to be fair and righteous. I don't try to get over. I don't try to mistreat them. Uh, praise the Lord. I want the best service. I want it so bad till I say, listen, I got y'all lunch today. Now, I'm going to pay you, but I'm going to go get y'all lunch. I'm trying to make sure you do my thing the right way, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. I want to make sure you do it the right way. Mm-hmm. So it says, for unto thee and my children, thou, for unto me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. What Egypt represented? Real quick, what did Egypt represent? God say, I brought them forth out of Egypt. Remember what I said about Jubilee. What is Jubilee? Uh-uh. Jubilee is not bondage. Think about it. When they blew the horn, woo, what was that? The year of Jubilee. That meant what? Celebration? What else? Freedom. It was, they were emancipated, remember, from whatever bondage they were in. So then, what does Egypt represent? Egypt represents bondage. And so God sent, watch, it's about to make sense. God sent Moses to deliver his people out of, which was Egypt. Come on, open up your mouth and say it. He went to send, get his people out of Egypt, which represented bondage, praise the Lord, and to, to liberate them and to make them emancipated or free. He sent Moses down there and said, I'm going down and I'm going to free these people. And so God, if God did that for them, don't you get on your high horse after you've gotten somewhere in life. You know, you, let's, uh, I can't eat dinner with them. I can eat dinner with anybody. You know how folk are. You get you a little money, I ain't going to say a little money. You get you over 500 something thousand. Uh, I, just, I just can't, I can't with them. Man, if you don't get out my face, man. Listen, I ain't changing. But you want some pancakes? Let's go get some pancakes. Huh? You want a steak? Let's go get a steak. I'm going to treat you the right way. And, that's, and because God said, I did it for you. Are y'all with me? Come on, give the Lord a hand praise on the day. God bless you. Step, have a smile upon you. So that was a little different of a lesson. It's about the children of Israel and Jubilee. So it's kind of tough to make it fit for us. But hey, it is what it is. We thank God for the lesson. And saints of God, we ask that you continue to pray for us, you that are viewing via social media. Ask that you will come in fellowship with us in the next 15 minutes as we get ready to get our Sunday morning services started. Please, if you, uh, if you, would, if you can just like, comment, subscribe to this channel, we absolutely love to have fellowship with you. So God bless you. Have a smile upon you, and we'll see you in the next 15 minutes.